On the scene video coverage of AHA 2012 is supported by Prodexa. Welcome back to AHA 2012. We want to do a meeting highlights on the scene because we have had an amazing set of trials here at this meeting. I uh, want to ask uh, Jess Mega, my colleague, to start off and Deepak Bob, what were your top picks from the meeting? Well, I think Freedom was absolutely a tremendous study, certainly a valiant effort, long follow-up, diabetic patients. Do we treat them with cabbage? Do we treat them with multivessel PCI? The study showed us that there was a reduction in the primary endpoint, a reduction in mortality, and I think from a patient perspective, this can't be ignored. Yeah, I, I think it certainly woke me up. As an interventionalist, do you think this is for everybody, or will we still The trial be was beautifully choosing? done. I don't think the results uh, can be debated. Uh, clearly, it showed that uh, surgery was superior. I will point out there was statistically significantly high rate of stroke in those patients that underwent bypass surgery versus PCI. And I'd also point out, similar to most randomized clinical trials, many patients were screened. Uh, relatively few were actually randomized, uh, proportionally speaking. Nevertheless, for the patients of the type that were enrolled, the results apply. But I do think patient preference, physician experience, a lot of other factors still come into play in this complex decision making. Yeah, and I think as been pointed out, this may shift the guidelines somewhat, uh, you know, to add, uh, you know, evidence we've been really waiting for. Now, other interventional trials, uh, what was your top pick? Well, you know, I, I, um, uh, I like renal denervation, and as you know, I'm involved uh, with uh, trials in that space, but the Enlighten One results were presented here. In fact, some of the results had been presented before, but there was uh, additional data presented here, and it looks like out to six months, this particular novel renal denervation catheter reduces blood pressure significantly, reduction in six months of office blood pressure of about 30 over 10 millimeters of mer mercury compared to baseline. So actually a significant finding consistent with other catheters that have been uh, evaluated for this purpose. So it seems to be a real finding. Yeah, and this has been in other studies, improvements not just in blood pressure but other factors, less AFib and amazing, uh, amazing findings. Uh, well, being tuned into cholesterol, there's been a myriad of studies looking at the PCSK9 inhibitors, uh, many dose ranging trials with several different drugs all with a very consistent finding of huge reductions in LDL, up to two-thirds, even three-quarters reduction in LDL cholesterol. Interesting dosing intervals seems if you give sub-Q injections every two weeks, it's a smoother and more persistently low uh, LDL. Uh, and announcements here that the, the big outcomes trials are just getting started, so a, a very, very exciting field. Uh, what were other things that, uh, that you tuned into from this meeting? Well, it was hard to ignore the platelet function testing results. So <laughs> first looking at Arctic, these took patients and stratified them either into uh, a group where they were triaged in terms of their platelet function testing. So 2,400 patients, 1,200 in the intervention arm. And those patients who were guided using platelet function testing, it didn't seem to benefit. Now, I think one thing to note is that there are only 1,200 patients in that arm and about a third of them have their treatment modulated. So we need to take that into account. On the other hand, we also saw the Trilogy platelet results. Overall there, there didn't seem to be a strong association. But again, Trilogy overall was considered potentially a neutral trial, at least during the first year. So it really, it opens up many more doors for exploration and certainly for platelet function testing leaves us with more questions than answers, I would say. Oh, I agree with that. There's definitely a need for a lot more research in this area, lots of provocative results from both those trials. But on a practical level for the clinician, certainly no evidence that routine platelet function testing is useful or should be employed. Yeah, yeah I think it is a, you know, this was a strategy trial nicely. Uh, and we haven't, we have the test, but to say what, how should we use them and what strategy, a terrific trial but pointing out we need to keep, keep digging. Uh, Deepak, other things you liked from here? Well, I, there were so many good trials here, it, it's hard to just pick a few, but I'll, I'll focus on some that I think have a lot of uh, public health and, and, and uh, impact to patients. So the multivitamin trial uh, from the Physician's Health Study 2 patients uh, randomized either multivitamin or not, 
no effect on cardiovascular outcomes, no benefit, no harm, so really no good reason to take a multivitamin if the purpose is for cardiovascular protection. So I think that's really important. Uh, sort of along that theme, uh, omega-3 fatty acids, fish oils, for atrial fibrillation didn't seem to do anything either. So mm -hmm. again, some negative data. And I think that's important because a lot of our patients, either with our knowledge or without our knowledge, are taking these over-the-counter uh, nutraceuticals. So. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, without good randomized clinical trial evidence, even things that are available over the counter probably ought not take them. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. These are useful negative trials that help define what does or doesn't work and hopefully can help us focus on things that do. Uh, another big surprise, I think, uh, is that HDL is uh, a trickier thing than we thought. It, it's been called good cholesterol, but now we're sort of wondering, is it really so good after all that um, the Dow Outcomes trial looked in 15,000 patients at using dolcetripib, raised HDL by about 30 percent, and found absolutely no benefit uh, of that intervention over a, a two plus year period. And so, uh, again, more questions being raised, although there are other drugs that have even greater uh, increases in HDL, uh, other infusions of HDL being looked at. And so sure. it's an active field, but uh, we don't have uh, clear answers yet on, on the benefits of, of HDL. Well, it's interesting as well, beyond the pharmacotherapy part of that, there was no association with HDL and outcome in that study. Uh, Granted, the patients were very well treated, lots of statin, antiplatelet therapy use, great background therapy, but in that milieu, no independent association between HDL and outcome. Yeah. And I would have to say, following up on lines that need further investigation, the chelation study, quite interesting. I think intriguing, there was a reduction in the primary outcome, so another area that's going <laughs> to open up more doors. Yeah, yeah but I... I, I uh, you know, I've got some uh, concerns. Uh, you know, there was a, if I remember correctly, 17% rate of withdrawal of consent. It yeah. seemed like it was differential in the two treatment arms. Not entirely clear why in a randomized, blinded trial there's differential uh, loss to follow-up or, or withdrawal of consent. So I, I think we really need to tease through the data when it's hopefully published and, and, and peer-reviewed before really opining on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, right, because it certainly, it, it did look like it was a, a cumbersome process, and again, if it can help patients, that's great, but we do need to tease through the data. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think a final interesting thing, uh, a uh, sort of a natural hormone relaxin was studied in, in a randomized trial for acute heart failure that looked pretty good. Yeah, it, relaxin works well in pregnancy. That's what leads to the increases in cardiac output, the decreases in SVR that occur in pregnancy. In theory, that should help in heart failure, and in this study, modest in size, only about 1,000 patients, it looked like it did. Yeah. So uh, I think this is, uh, as you can see, an, an amazing array of trials, some positive, others negative, but useful. Uh, many questions emerge from these large trials, but I think some big uh, changes in practice also with freedom and other therapies. So a, a really terrific uh, AHA 2012. So thank you for joining us.